and welcome. Federal Ministry of Health says it's reviewing strategies to enable it manage a possible surge in COVID-19 case numbers as evidence of community transmission emerges. Lagos State records 16 patients discharged from isolation centers, including three foreigners, the highest number in a single day after recovering from COVID-19. Youths in Delta State protest shooting of residents in Saple, even as one person is shot dead in Anambra State following the extension of the lockdown. And confirmed cases of COVID-19 passed 2 million mark globally, according to John Hopkins University, although actual number of cases could be much higher. Plus, business, sports, news from Abuja, the FCT, and data from our news studios in London. On business news tonight, International Monetary Fund IMF set to provide $11 billion to 32 sub-Saharan African countries to curtail the impact of COVID-19 on their economies. On sports news tonight, Italian football club Juventus confirmed defender Daniel Rugani and midfielder Blaise Matuidi have both made full recoveries from coronavirus. From Abuja, Inspector General of Police warns road transporters against night traveling in contravention of restriction of movement order, says there will be tough consequences. The Federal Ministry of Health is currently reviewing the nation's strategies to enable it manage a possible surge in the numbers of COVID-19 cases as evidence of community transmission gets clearer. At the daily news conference of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 in Abuja, the Minister of Health, Dr. Sagi Ehaniri, explained that the new strategy includes plans to increase testing capacity in the hotspots. Members of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 arrive in the venue of the daily update about how the government is handling the pandemic. Chairman of the task force informs the gathering about plans to expand the scope of government's palliatives for citizens during the lockdown. The Presidential Task Force is fine-tuning the expansion of the palliatives for the poor, vulnerable, aged, and others as directed by the president. We shall reach out to all these groups as directed by the president very, very soon. The Minister of Health highlights government's preparedness for possible surge in the number of COVID-19 cases, which could result from community transmission of the virus. The imminent advent of community transmission marks an evolution of our initial strictly containment strategy. Risk communication to the public and coordination with the state level COVID-19 response preparedness groups are going to be scaled up. There's also an increased drive to detect cases more rapidly, especially in hotspot communities. Face masks are perhaps some of the most used protective gear since the outbreak of COVID-19 last year. Shortage of this commodity is now making the government to recommend improvised face masks for the public. 50% of all the masks in the world are produced in one country, China, that has been locked down for months. They're now restarting their production and thankfully some of those things are coming out. A lot of the PPEs are produced in countries that need it themselves, so have themselves banned the exportation of a lot of these things, including masks. So the demand is very high, and even with a lot of resources, a country like Nigeria is not able to meet uh, the demands of everyone. So there's no way we can supply masks to everybody in Nigeria right now. So if you're a member of the public and you want to wear a mask, you don't have to wear a medical mask. In fact, we don't um, recommend the use of medical masks for members of the public. We recommend the use of improvised cloth masks to protect you if you insist. Coronavirus is a highly infectious disease that has resulted in the death of over 120,000 persons globally in less than one year of its outbreak. It is the reason why countries around the world are taking seriously the issues of protection 
testing, and treatment of their citizens. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, says it has activated two new laboratories for COVID-19 testing. Breaking the news via its official Twitter handle, the NCDC explains that one of the laboratories, DNA Lab, is a private sector facility in Kaduna, while the other is at the University of Midugri Teaching Hospital in Bronu State. According to the agency, the number of testing facilities for COVID-19 nationwide now stands at 13, while those in Sokoto and Port Harcourt River State will come on stream soon. The Lagos State Government says it has discharged 16 more patients who have recovered from COVID-19 at two of its isolation centers in Yaba and Onikon. Governor Babajide Sonwolu confirmed this on his verified Twitter handle, given the breakdown of those discharged as 14 males and two females, including three foreigners, one Briton, one Chinese, and a Polish citizen. According to the governor, the 14 patients from IDH Yaba and two from the Unico Isolation Center have fully recovered and tested twice to COVID-19. This brings the number of patients successfully managed and discharged from Lagos State facilities to 85. However, the State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Akin Abayomi, announced that another death from COVID-19 has been recorded in Lagos. He explained on his verified Twitter handle that the victim is a 63-year-old Nigerian male who has no travel history outside the country or contact with any confirmed case. On the other hand, and sadly too, a medical doctor has died of coronavirus at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital Isolation Ward after contracting the virus from a patient he had been managing in a private hospital. Dr. Chugu Emeka becomes the first health worker in Nigeria to die from this virus. The chief medical director of LUT, Professor Chris Body, who confirmed the incident, says Dr. Emeka was brought in late to the facility on Monday after showing severe symptoms. He adds that the late doctor once worked with loot before going into private practice. Meanwhile, the Nigerian Medical Association, NME, has condoled with the family of the doctor and members of the medical community over the loss. Dr. Emeka specialized in gynecology and obstetrics and was a former vice president of the National Association of Resident Doctors in Luth. Still in Lagos State, there has been low compliance to the stay-at-home order in Ekpe local government area and Aja. Checkpoints still have to deal with a large number of vehicles with individuals giving different excuses to security operators sent to enforce the lockdown order. Our correspondent, Ini John Mekwa, has the rest of the story. With a population of just about 180,000, according to 2006 census, living in an area of 965 kilometers, it will be difficult to have any part of Ekpe crowded. But this should not be mistaken for compliance to the stay-at-home order. Commercial motorcycles are still in business, and so are the tricycles. You don't expect them to stay home. They have nothing to eat. They have nothing to eat. They have to go out to search for food. There's, however, a part of town which seems to adhere to the order to curtail the spread of COVID-19. <laughs> Residents say the markets are open every other day in line with the laid down rule for this period. The popular Oluo fish market is partially in operation. A common line of discussion around the town is that there's low compliance because there are loopholes in the distribution strategy of the palliatives. They share bread and rice and beans with politics. We, we are people, we are, we are, we are always very clever that we want more. The compliance level in Aja is not so different. There's been an increase in the number of checkpoints in the area. Security agents here are not allowed to speak on camera, but they say some people here should not be on the road. I will listen to you. 
I said, please, I will listen to you. The plea of the federal government comes to play here when Nigerians are asked to sacrifice their comfort for now by observing the lockdown to accelerate the process of getting the country back to normalcy. In John Mekwa, Channel Television News. In neighboring Ogun State, the government says it has set up a laboratory as part of efforts towards flattening the curve of COVID-19 pandemic in the state. The state government says it's also working on reviewing the relaxation windows for residents during the 14-day lockdown extension. Governor Dakwa Biodun explains that the molecular lab situated at the Olabisi Onobanjo University in Shagamu will be in use after finishing touches are put to its operation. Ogun State is one of the three places where the federal government declared a lockdown for another 14 days. And still in the southwest, six more COVID-19 patients have been discharged from the isolation center at Ijibu in Ocean State after testing negative twice to the virus, in line with the National Center for Disease Control Protocol. Those discharged from the treatment center in Ijibu are part of returnees from Côte d'Ivoire who came to the state some weeks ago. Governor of the state, Boyega Oyitala, broke the news via his verified Twitter handle today. The tweet reads, Another good news from our isolation center, as six more COVID-19 patients have tested negative twice, in line with the NCDC Gov protocol. The patients, who are amongst the 127 Ivory Coast returnees, have been discharged to join their families. He says this brings to 17 the number of cases that have tested negative twice and have been discharged after treatment in Ocean State. The state is now left with two COVID-19 patients whom the governor says are responding to treatment at the isolation centers in Oshobo and Ejibo. Now from Ocean, let's head to Kaduna State where Governor Naso Erufai says he's yet to be confirmed negative for COVID-19 by his doctors. The governor, who had earlier chaired a virtual meeting of the state executive council from his isolation center on Wednesday, explained that he will personally announce when he's confirmed negative. He asked the general public to ignore all fake news about his being negative, even if that is what they wish for. Governor Erufai in a tweet said that he was proud of members of his cabinet, led by the deputy governor, for keeping governors going without him. And over in the northeast, in Adamawa State, residents are now free to go about their day-to-day -day activities. This comes as the governor, Omari Fintiri, has relaxed the restriction order on movement across the state. Some poor residents, especially those in Yola Dort, have been receiving food items courtesy of the wife of the state governor. From the last count, 19 Nigerian states and the Federal Capital Territory have confirmed cases of the deadly COVID-19 disease. Of that number, Bochi is the only northeastern state with six cases. Adamawa does not have any case yet, but has been working hard to maintain that status. Closure of schools, work from home arrangement, border closure and restriction of movement are some of the measures taken by the state government. And now the governor thinks those steps are yielding desired result. Having assessed the development in the past two weeks and the overwhelming compliance with the preventive measures, government has decided to relax the restriction order for the time being. Consequently, all private and public schools remain closed till further notice, when movement will only be allowed within the boundaries of the state. As a result, work will also resume fully on Wednesday, the 14th April, 2020. Travels in and out of the state remain banned, and our international borders will also remain closed. Although restriction on movement has been relaxed, things may not remain the same for a little longer. And to mitigate the impact these steps are having on residents, the wife of the state governor is working with a non-governmental organization to give stimulus packages to vulnerable residents. The first phase is targeted at residents of Limawa and Lagos wards in Yola North local government area of the state. We start from the most vulnerable to less vulnerable. So we have our ways of knowing it. The number of households, the handicaps, 
the number of infants, pregnant women, there are a lot of things we consider. This intervention is primarily for 3,000 residents of Yola North Council areas. It is expected that some help will also come for the 20 other local government areas in the state.